welcome to economics revision lesson for grade 12. This is the last revision lesson of economics and it is all about the trade sector in Ethiopian economy. First of all, let's see the role of trade in economic development. International trade is a country's exchange of goods and services with other countries of the world. No country in the world can produce all the goods and services that it requires due to several reasons. Due to economies of scale, due to differences in resource endowment, we cannot produce whatever we want to produce because we don't have all the resources that are important or essential for the production of all commodities. The other reason behind engaging in international trade is unequal distribution of population. Some countries have large number of population while others have small number of population. So this difference in the number of population leads to difference in the labor force. So it leads to international trade. The other reason behind engaging in international trade is unequal distribution of capital. Some countries are rich in capital and some countries are poor. So it leads to international trade and the difference in technology or unequal distribution of technology leads to international trade. When we see the benefits of international trade, behind engaging international trade, we can get variety of goods. If there is no international trade, it's difficult to get all the goods that we need to survive. So variety of goods is the benefits of international trade. Access of raw material and specialized goods is another benefit of international trade. Specialization and division of labor. Competition, if there is competition, there is cheap goods or goods became cheaper. Optimum allocation of resources. Surplus production and possibility of economic development are the benefits of international trade. There are two bases of international trade called absolute advantage and comparative advantage. A nation is said to have an absolute advantage in production of a particular commodity if that country can produce the product at the least cost than any other country. Remember here, producing a product at large quantity is not a guarantee for the existence of absolute advantage. For example, the Americans do have the capital, but they cannot produce coffee. Why? Because it requires higher cost of production. That is the reason why they cannot produce coffee. So a country has an absolute advantage if it can produce the product at the least cost than any other country. Countries enjoy with an absolute advantage if that country is the sole producer of something or if a country can produce a product due to climate, natural resource and level of technology or economies of scale. For example, due to the natural resource, South Africa has an absolute advantage in production of diamond. Since we don't have diamond, we cannot have an absolute advantage in production of diamond. This is due to the natural resource, the gift of nature, the country can enjoy with an absolute advantage. In terms of climate, some countries have good climates that enables them to produce more of agricultural commodities. Hence, they will become sole producer or they will be the one who can produce the product at the least cost than any other country. In this case, the country has an absolute advantage. Comparative advantage. A country is said to have a comparative advantage in production of a particular commodity. If it can produce and export those commodities that it cannot produce more efficiently and by importing those commodities that it cannot produce more efficiently. Comparative advantage is a theory of international trade that is proposed by David Ricardo and absolute advantage is a theory of international trade that was proposed by Adam Smith. The comparative advantage states that even though countries do not have an absolute advantage in production of a particular commodity, still they can benefit from international trade. For example, 
Ethiopia has no absolute advantage in production of any commodity. But Ethiopia still can benefit from international trade by producing and exporting those commodities that she can export and by importing those commodities that Ethiopia cannot produce efficiently. For example, let's take rice and just trouser. Is better for Ethiopia to produce more jeans trousers and exports jeans trousers than exporting rice for China? Or is it better to import more trousers and export rice? Because we do have good climate for rice production, Ethiopia has better to engage in production of rice and export production of rice. And since our technology is too backward, we have better to import trousers from China or abroad. So this leads to the comparative advantage. There are restrictions of international trade. Barriers or restrictions of international trade are those factors that affect the smooth flow of goods and services from one country to the other. These restrictions of international trade are mainly targeted to protect domestic economics from unfair foreign competition. And the other reason behind imposing restrictions or barriers in international trade is these barriers or restrictions can serve as a source of revenue for the government in the form of tax. Let's see the major barriers of international trade called tariff, currency devaluation, and quota. Tariff is a tax that is imposed by the government on goods imported or exported. Mainly, most countries apply the import tariff in order to discourage the import of goods from abroad. And this tariff is expected to reduce import of a nation. And if tariff is imposed on goods and services, this tariff is expected to increase price of imported goods. That means the one with a higher tariff has a higher price and a good with lower tariff has lower price. Let's see the bits of imposing tariff called specific tariff, ad valerum and compounded tariff. Specific tariff is a tariff that is imposed based on the quantity, physical quantity of goods imported or exported in terms of number. But the ad valorum tariff is a tariff that is imposed based on monetary value of goods or the worth of goods imported or exported. For example, in a specific tariff, the tariff imposed on a container of gold and a container of cotton is the same. But in ad valorum tariff, the tariff that is imposed on a container of gold is higher than a tariff that is imposed on a container of cotton because the worth of the gold is higher than the worth of cotton. Compound tariff is a combination of both tariffs, specific and ad valorum tariffs, that means government imposes by using the quantity or the number of goods imported and at the same time it is based on the value or the worth of goods imported or exported. The other restriction of international trade is quota. Quota is a quantitative limitation or restriction of goods imported or exported. The third restriction of international trade is devaluating currency. Currency devaluation is an administrative reduction in the price or the worth of a nation's currency in terms of other nation's currency. For instance, if once upon a time, if once one USD was converted for 10 Ethiopian bar, now if one USD is converted for 20 Ethiopian bar in terms of USD, the Ethiopian bar is devalued. That means it is losing its value. But there is a reason behind devaluating a nation's currency. For example, once upon a time, the one Ethiopian USD was converted for 2.07 Ethiopian bar during Derg for quite a long period of time. But 
now one USD is converted for around 38 Ethiopian bar. That means the Ethiopian government is devalued the Ethiopian bar. Why does the Ethiopian government devalue the Ethiopian bar? The reason behind devaluating a nation's currency is in order to increase export of a country and in order to reduce import of a country. Now let me show you using numbers. For example, in order to import from abroad, the importer has to buy dollar and an importer with a capital of 100,000 ETH If the price of one USD is timber, an importer with a capital of 100,000 ETH can buy 10,000 USD. Now he can buy a worth of 10,000 USD. Now, if the ETH number is devalued and if one USD is converted for 20 ETH number, the same investor with a capital of 100,000 ETH number can buy only 5,000 USD. Now, he can import half of the commodity that he can import before. So, the major reason behind devaluating a nation's currency is in order to reduce import and in order to increase export of a country. Now let me show you how one can increase export of a country. When you export, you, you get dollar and an exporter, suppose an exporter gets 10,000 USD from export of a commodity. Now, if one USD is converted for 10 ETH number, then an exporter with a worth of 10,000 USD can convert with 100,000 ETH number. Now, this importer can export a worth of 100,000 ETH number. Now, if the ETH number is devalued and if one USD is converted for 20 bar, the same exporter with a capital of 10,000 USD can convert this dollar with 200,000 ETH number. That means he can export double of the value of export that he can export before. So the primary reason behind devaluating a nation's currency is in order to reduce import and in order to increase export of a country. So this currency devaluation is one way of restricting trades in international trade. And this currency devaluation is expected to reduce import of a nation and it is also expected to increase price of imported goods. Now let's see the mode of payment in foreign trade. Bill of exchange or drafts is an order in a written form by a creditor or exporter to a debitor or importer signed by the exporter requiring the person to whom it is addressed debtor to pay either on demand or at a fixed date or at a definite future time a certain sum of money to the person or bank named on the bill. The debtor or importer accepts by signing and it becomes legally binding contract. This is one means of payment in international trade. But these bills might be addressed through banks, but banks will not act on the behalf of either the buyer or the seller. Simply they can serve as an agent. Bankers transfer is the second mode of transport in international trade. It is a transfer of money from the bank account of the importer in his or her own country to the bank account of the exporter. It's simply transfer of money from bank account of the importer to the bank account of the exporter. The third one is letter of credit. Letter of credit is a letter sent by importer's bank to exporter's bank to make a payment for exporter on the behalf of the importer against shipping documents. This is accomplished through the advising bank and the confirming bank. So the banks will act on the behalf of either the importer or the exporter. This is the safest modes of payment in international trade. Nowadays, more than 90% of international trade payments are accomplished through letter of credit because the banks will act on the behalf of either the buyer or the seller. Now let's see the trade policy and the strategies in Ethiopia. Domestic trade policy of the Derg regime 
After the downfall of the imperialism, Derg nationalized and restructured both the wholesale and retail trade under the Ministry of Trade, MOT, as corporation. There was very limited participation of private merchants and they mostly sell to government owned agricultural merchandise corporation AMC at predetermined price during Derg. This is the domestic trade policy of the Derg region. Manufactured goods or industrial products were distributed by government owned Ethiopian Domestic Distribution Corporation EDDC. And most of the EDDC and all of the AMC directed towards government institutions and urban dwellers associations. Basic or residential manufactured goods which had shortage were distributed through quota and rationing. Only the Agricultural Merchandising Corporation had a mandate to move food grains among regions. That means there was restriction on movement of food grain from one part of the country to the other. This restriction on movement of food grain from one part of the country to the other during Derg has three effects. The first effect is in food grain deficit areas, it affects consumers of food grain by increasing price of food grain. Second, in food grain surplus areas, it erodes the incentives of producers of food grain by depressing price of food grain. And the third effect of restriction or movement of food grain from one part of the country to the other is it disrupts the national food grain marketing system. According to the proclamation of Derg, trading activity was allowed only to proprietors, only to individuals. That means trading activity under the partnership form, under corporation form for private businesses was not allowed during Derg. There was no licensing for government employees. Government employees were not allowed to engage in any trading activities during Derg. There was capital selling of birds, 300,000 for horse selling and the birds, 200,000 for retailing during Derg. So capital selling was a feature of the domestic trade policy and strategy of the Derg regime. An individual could get licensed only in the region he or she resides. That means an individual who was born in Nakamt cannot engage in trading activity in Addis Ababa. In short, individuals are allowed to engage in their own region. Only one business license and one business line were permitted. Individuals are allowed to engage only in one business line and they are allowed to engage in only one business licenses. Branch establishments were not allowed or simply branch establishments were prohibited during Derg. License provision was tied to supply conditions. If government can supply the product, individuals are not allowed to engage in trading activities. Now this is the domestic trade policy of the new government. The new government liberalized domestic trading activities based on free market ideology. The Ethiopian privatization agency sold most of government owned public enterprise and government agencies have had limited participation in wholesale trade and completely government withdrew from retail trading activities. When we see the liberalization measures of the new government on domestic trade, there is free movement of food grains among different regions. If you remember, there was restriction on movement of food grain from one part of the country to the other during Derg. But under the new government, there is free movement of food grains among different regions. Easy licensing and legal recognition by the government. Shrinkage of parastatals. Diversified rural and urban market channels like the Ethiopian commodity exchange. Traditional private marketing systems has revived. The private trade appears in deficiencies and public by the new government. Better quality grains shipped to the central market. Producer consumer price margin narrowed. The price fluctuation related to supply and demand. These are the major policy measures taken by the new government in domestic trade of Ethiopia. When we see the foreign trade policy of Derg, 
The major objectives of foreign trade policy of Doug were first mobilizing government revenue by imposing tariffs on goods imported or exported, protecting domestic economy participants from foreign competition, maintaining favorable balance of payment at sustainable level, and gradual prevention of the private sector from foreign trade participation. These are the four objectives of the foreign trade policy of the Derg region. When we see the features of foreign trade policies of the Derg region, exporters were not allowed to export commodities at prices lesser than the reference price provided by the government. Exporters were forced to surrender 100% of foreign exchange they obtained by the government during Derg. There was restrictive foreign exchange licensing systems for the private use. Then the exchange rate was fixed at birth to 0 0.07 for a dollar for quite a long period of time. And the government provided marketing channels for all imports and major exports of the country. These are public channels. When we see the foreign trade policy of the new government, the new government changed the fixed exchange rate system to a managed floating exchange rate system. The managed floating exchange rate system is a combination of a fixed exchange rate system and a flexible exchange rate system. The fixed exchange rate system is an exchange rate system that is set by the force of the national bank or the government. And the floating exchange rate system or the flexible exchange rate system is an exchange rate system that is set by the force of the market, by the demand and supply of currencies. And the managed floating is an exchange rate system which is a combination of both the fixed exchange rate system. That means government will set by its force and sometimes it is determined by the market force. When we see the foreign trade policy of the new government, government introduced interbank foreign exchange markets and suspended export duties except coffee. That means custom duty is free for all commodities in Ethiopia for exports only, except export of coffee. And the, the new government made incentives like currency devaluation and subsidies to promote exports of a country. Now this is the development in the balance of payment of Ethiopia. Since Ethiopia mostly exports agricultural products and imports higher valued capital goods, the country runs a severe balance of trade deficit. Despite the substantial private transfer inflows and small but increasing net receipts from service, the current account balance continued to experience deficit in Ethiopian balance of payment. But the capital account significantly rises and generally the balance of payment of the country faces deficit continually. Now let's see the balance of payment. Balance of payment is summary of all the transactions made by a nation with the rest of the world. The balance of payment has two major accounts called the capital account and the current account. The current account of the balance of payment The current account of the balance of payment measures the difference between merchandise, export and import, the difference between service, import and export and the differences between remittance and gifts. Now let's see the components of the current account of the balance of payment. First, there is trade balance. Trade balance is the difference between merchandise export and merchandise import. If the merchandise export is greater than the merchandise import, the trade balance is surplus and if the merchandise import is greater than the merchandise export the trade balance is deficit and finally if the merchandise export is equal to the merchandise import the trade balance is said to be balanced second there is service balance service balance is the difference between service export and service import If service import is greater than service export, the service balance is surplus or positive. And if the service import is greater than the service export, the service balance 
is in deficit and finally if the service export is equal to service import the service balance is said to be balanced and c net transfer net transfer is the difference between remittance and gifts received minus remittance and gifts paid this will give you the net transfer if the remittance and gifts received is greater than the remittance and gifts paid the net transfer will be positive and if the remittance and gifts paid is greater than the remittance and gifts received then the net transfer will be negative and if the remittance and gifts received is equal to the remittance and gifts paid then the net transfer will be zero now the current account balance cab is the sum of trade balance service balance and net service second the second account of the balance of payment is the capital account The capital account of the balance of payment measures the difference between the assets held in a country by foreigners and the assets held by citizens of a country abroad. So the capital account balance CAAB will give you the assets held in this country minus the assets held abroad. by citizens of a country and suddenly there is a statistical discrepancy statistical discrepancies are expected omissions or errors that are expected to occur while we measure the balance of payment while we collect data for the balance of payment so in order to compensate these errors we will make some adjustments this is called statistical discrepancies finally the balance of payment the bop is the sum of the current account balance the capital account balance and statistical discrepancies now after calculating the balance of payment by adding the current account balance the capital account balance and the statistical discrepancies then if you get negative value the bop is said to be bop deficit and after calculating the bop if you get positive value it is said to be bop surplus and after calculating the bop if you get zero the bop is said to be balanced now this is the national debit service and performance in ethiopia national debit is accumulation of loans entered by government from creditor nations and lending institutions it is classified into two called domestic debit and external debit domestic debit is when government borrows from domestic financial institutions it is the amount of public sector borrowing from different banks and financial institutions in the country but the external debit is government loan from creditor nations and giant international financial institutions the national debit service is the amount of foreign exchange or dollar that is required to repay the debt and the interest on the debt since ethiopia mostly exports agricultural products and imports higher valued capital goods the country runs a severe balance of trade deficit this deficit in turn means that Ethiopia must borrow heavily to finance its imports. 
1997, the total debit of the country Ethiopia stood at USD 10 billion. That means Ethiopia owed USD 10 billion in the year 1997. The National Debit Service burden of Ethiopia didn't exhibit decline due to excess of import of a country over export. If there is an excess of import of a country over export, the dollar that we get from export cannot cover the dollar that we need to import. Hence, we will suffer from shortage of foreign exchange. And in order to avoid the problem of shortage of foreign exchange, government will meet such duty. Now, this is globalization. Globalization is the process of integrating an economy with world markets. The advantages of globalization are it provides investment capital from abroad. It enables us to get easy transfer of technology and it opens markets for domestic products by increasing demand for domestically produced products. Competition and division of labor are the benefits of globalization. If there is competition, the society will get quality products at lower prices. It is good for the development of a country. When we see the disadvantage, there is unfair foreign competition, which destroys infant domestic industries. Foreign industries, they can produce quality products by the least cost, but domestic industries produce low quality products at higher costs, then they cannot compete in domestic markets. That means infant domestic industries will be out of market. Vulnerability of domestic economy to external shocks. If there's a shock, if there is a recession, if there's a depression in other country due to globalization, there is a shock in domestic economy. Loss of sovereignty to address. Loss of sovereignty to address social issues. Trigger competitive devaluation and unproductive competition among least developed countries are the disadvantages of globalization. When we see the regional economic integrations, there are different regional economic integrations around the world. The Preferential Trade Area, PTA, Southern African Development Coordination Conference, Common Market for East and Southern Africa, COMESA, IGAD and ECOWAS are among regional economic integrations of Africa. Ethiopia is member of different regional economic integrations such as COMESA and IGAD. The expected gains from regional economic integrations are increased production arising from specialization according to comparative advantage, increased outputs arose from economies of scale, improvement in terms of trade with the rest of the world. Now, students, let me give you revision exercise. The first question is list at least three features of domestic trade policy of the Derg region. The second question is list at least three features of foreign trade policy of the new government. The third question is distinguish absolute and comparative advantage. And finally, define globalization. Students, this is all about economics revision lesson. Stay safe, stay home. Thank you.